have transferred lately. But don't you think the delay to hold the extraordinary conference is partly to blame for the creation of all most of these challenges? I, I don't think so. I don't subscribe to that because, as a matter of fact, probably the delay of holding our conference has been a very good opportunity for the party to learn mm -hmm. and to understand each other. Mm -hmm. Because can you imagine, had we held the conference and we carried along the likes of uh, Miles Sampa, mm -hmm. and we carried along the likes of Chavinga, mm -hmm. you never know what kind of snakes they would have become in the future. Mm -hmm. So probably this delay is, uh, is God sent. As a rider to that, could this delay have something to do with uh, the return of uh, the former president that you are not sure whether he was coming or not so you have to you have to put uh, the whole the hosting of the the extraordinary conference in utter bias until you know you you appreciated the position the status of the former President. Former pre Republican president, sixth Republican president of Zambia, mm -hmm. and current president of the Patriotic Front, has always been president of the PF. Mm -hmm. And uh, even those who have been making commentaries, even those who have been challenging his receiving of benefits. But he wrote have to cabinet, you know, and say he had resigned from. Politics. Yes, yeah. he, he wrote and said yeah. he had resigned from active politics. Mm -hmm. But he also put a rider. He said, yeah. I'm going to hold this position in the party until I hand over to my successor mm -hmm. after he has been elected. Now in he's handed over to himself. Yes, now he has been forced to hand over to himself because he has come to the realization that when he said I've resigned, the likes of Miles Sampa have become pawns mm -hmm. in the game that they're now being told, look, there's a vacuum vacancy at the presidency and because of that vacancy push for the extraordinary conference mm -hmm. go and hold that illegal conference because there's a vacancy mm -hmm. they tried to twist the whole thing to create an impression that president edgar lungu was no longer president mm -hmm. but the truth of the matter is that president edgar lungu is and has always been the mm -hmm. only legally elected president of this party Mouth. and he took leave yeah. and by the way let me explain this for the yeah. sake of the viewers watch the entire video my lovely viewers i mean from start to finish to get the whole thing without wasting much of your time let's get right into it Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers conference on the 28th of October mm. but they wanted to hijack that by saying it was the central committee which called the general conference extraordinary conference for the 28th mm. so their plan was actually to hold the extraordinary conference on the 28th mm. and we knew about that we heard about that mm. but to show you that this was very well orchestrated you will recall that Mayo Sampa had actually gone to court and sued the registrar of societies mm asking the court to compel the Registrar of Societies to compel the Patriotic Front mm -hmm. to hold an extraordinary conference. Mm -hmm. We challenged that matter, we joined that matter mm -hmm. to challenge that uh, petition. Yeah. Soon after that, I'm sure that Zambians were questioning the rationale behind Mayo Sampa deciding to withdraw that matter from court. Mm -hmm. We started to read that there was some complicity somewhere. Mm -hmm. Soon after Mao Sampa withdrew that case from court, what did we see? We saw Registrar of Societies mm -hmm. writing a circular, compelling mm -hmm. all political parties mm -hmm. to hold conventions or conferences, elect elective conferences, yeah. within 60 days. Yeah. Then we realized that this was an attempt to trap us. Mm -hmm. 
And they were referring to a statutory instrument, I think it's 529, mm -hmm. signed by Jack Mwimbu. And it was signed after Miles Sampa had already commenced action against the mm -hmm. retro societies. Mm -hmm. Now you can see that this is not a, a coincidence. This is an orchestrated program. When they realized that we held our central committee meeting where we discussed the issue of the conferences and we said this was too big a matter for us to discuss in that particular central committee meeting and we decided to defer it to be held in that special uh, central committee meeting to be held three weeks thereafter. Mm -hmm. Then they realized that because we had announced that 28th was no longer the date of the general conference, they quickly moved in and decided that Miles must hold his hawks mm -hmm. on the 24th. Right. of October. So we saw this as an orchestrated uh, arrangement. And what is important for Zambians to note is that Miles Samba did not put notice to anybody. Mm -hmm. He neither published in the press that he was going to hold this, press con this conference. Mm -hmm. Secondly, he n did not notify the police. We know for a fact that the police only authorized him the night of the 23rd, mm -hmm. that he could hold the conference on the Independence Day. Mm -hmm. The second issue that ought to be brought into discussion is, could the police have been so callous mm -hmm. as to allow an opposition political party to hold an elective general conference mm -hmm. on a day as sacred mm -hmm. as an Independence Day? Mm -hmm. As you are well aware, as your viewers will be aware, the celebration of independence of any country is sacred. Mm -hmm. That day is revered. That is the reason why heads of state always invite dignitaries to come and observe that day. Mm -hmm. Now, what was it that could have prompted the police to say, yes, Miles Sampa can go ahead and organize an elective conference mm -hmm. on Independence Day? Third question would be, when the Patriotic Front and other political parties asked the police to provide them security when they wanted to hold rallies, mm -hmm. their response was that they didn't have sufficient police officers. Mm -hmm. On that particular day, when Mao Sampa held his hawks of a conference, we saw huge numbers, battalions of mm -hmm. police officers. We saw armored vehicles going to Mulungushi. We saw official of that conference. It wasn't anything that uh, is associated with an opposition political party. It was as though the head of state was actually addressing that meeting because of the presence of police everywhere. The full coverage on ZNBC of that event should also raise questions. Where could Miles Sampa have gotten money to pay ZNBC? for that full coverage mm -hmm. of that conference. Further to that, we were shocked to see that the police cleared fingerprints mm -hmm. of the so-called office bearers mm -hmm. on the 24th of October. Mm -hmm. That conference of theirs ended after 17 hours mm -hmm. on a public holiday, and yet the police lifted fingerprints mm -hmm. of the so-called office bearers. And the question we have for Inspector General of Police is, when has it ever happened that police can go and lift f fingerprints of people, except criminals, on Independence Day, on a public holiday? Even for criminals, once criminals are picked up, all the formalities are done during working days. They're not done over a public holiday. What was it that motivated them to lift fingerprints on Independence Day, in the night of Independence Day? Again, I say Vice President, and legally or not, uh, you know, uh, uh, legal. There are those who are saying, this is karma. You know, this is uh, similar, you know, to what PF did, you know, to the faction of uh, Dr. Nevas Mumba's, uh, you know, MMD, you know, when a similar situation, you know, happened, and it's, it's virtually... Uh, for lack of a better, you know, word, you know, demobilized, you know, uh, you know, Nevas Mumbas uh, in, in a faction. And this similar situation, and this, you know, karma, as people are saying. Uh, I don't take uh, that opinion as mm. being your opinion. Mm. 
No, not no, at all. No, this is what no. people are saying. That's, that's exactly what I'm coming to. Yes. It is not your opinion. Yeah. It, is, it is the opinion of one nervous moment. Yeah, yeah. And I have to say, it is a pity that uh, yeah. a man of the caller mm -hmm. can go out and misinform the public to the mm -hmm. extent that Nevers is doing. Mm -hmm. Nevers has been my friend for a long time. Yeah. And I really feel for him. I feel sad for him mm -hmm. that uh, for political expediency, mm -hmm. he can throw away honesty to the level that he has done, mm -hmm. to the extent that he has done. Mm -hmm. Nevers Mumba is the one who should actually tell the Zambian people mm -hmm. the truth. Mm -hmm. That when they were having their wrangles in the, in the MMD, the Patriotic Front government stayed totally away from it. Mm -hmm. They tried very hard to bring in President Edgar Lungu. And at every turn, President Edgar Lungu said he was not going to get involved mm -hmm. in the matters of the MMD. Mm -hmm. And the Patriotic Front government had no role whatsoever to play mm -hmm. in the wrangles that took place. Mm -hmm. You may recall, and your viewers may recall, that as a matter of fact, at that time, mm -hmm. Nevers Mumba was being challenged on the tenure of, of his office mm -hmm. because he had been elected through an extraordinary conference, which was held after. President Rupia Banda left office mm -hmm. in 2012. Mm -hmm. And the, PF, the, the MMD themselves were saying, your office is contaminous with the office of the National Executive Committee. Mm -hmm. And because the office of the National Executive Committee had come to an end, his office also had come to an end. Mm -hmm. That is the cause of the dispute mm -hmm. in the MMD. Mm -hmm. The PF had no role to play whatsoever. If, and I think for the sake of the yeah. viewers, it would be very kind of you, not for my sake, not for the sake of the PF, but for the sake of the viewers so that history is recorded mm. properly. If you are to bring in this studio mm. the two groups that were involved in the Rango, mm. they will explain to you that as a matter of fact, the one who was posturing to have been close to the PF mm. was Nevers Mumba. Mm. You may recall that there was uh, even a... Uh, a satirical article in the, I think it was in the Post newspapers, mm. when President Lungu said, no, the men who are aspiring to be my running mate, mm. sorry, it shall be a woman. Mm. There were pictures drawn of Nevers Mumba in a dress, mm. saying, Nevers Mumba, if you want to be, active, you want to be running mate for, to Edgar Lungu, mm. you must be a woman. Right. So it was Nevers actually who was closer yeah. to the Patriotic Front than the Mutati group. Yeah. And yet, what was the outcome? Yeah. After all this was done, who did President Ed, Ed Galungu appoint? Mm. It was not Nevers Mumba. That's, it was it was Motata. That's basically where I'm come I'm, I'm coming to, uh, you know, Vice President. How do you explain the appointment of uh, Motati as Minister immediately after the elections, and the appointment of your President and Secretary General, uh, you know, Nakachinda? Wasn't it because of the role they played, you know, to uh, to oust, for lack of a better word, you know, uh, or to weaken, uh, you know, the MMD faction? Not at Nevers? all. Not at all. Mm -hmm. The interest of President Edgar Lungu in appointing Motati was not as a result of the weakening of the MMD. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Mm -hmm. I was in a meeting myself in Kitwe, where the Motati group came to approach us, asking us to work with them. Mm -hmm. and they were hoping that we could share constituencies. Mm -hmm. It was very categorical. We put it very categorically that we were not going to go into an alliance mm -hmm. whatsoever with any political party mm -hmm. because by then we had already identified all our parliamentary candidates mm -hmm. and President Edgar Lungu had already decided on who would be his running mate. Mm -hmm. There was no space for them. Mm -hmm. And all we said to them was, if you are willing, come and work with us. Right. And they came and worked with us. And because they worked with us, after elections, mm. we thought it wise that we should give some of them some positions. All right. Let's talk about uh, your friend in you know, a And I know he's, he's a good friend of, uh, of yours. You know, by the way, he's my, he's, a, he's my nephew. But, you know, we don't want to get involved, you know, as a family because this is the political, you know, you know issue. Are you surprised that your own friend could do that to you and you know PF. What what are the major interests of this and indeed the confusion you know that is going on in PF? Uh, the actions of Mayo Sampa give me mixed emotions. Mm -hmm. First, 
one of regret. Mm -hmm. I really regret having led the people who pleaded mm -hmm. with the Central Committee for the readmission of Mayo Sampa into, this, into the party. Mm -hmm. It was actually I who, in the Central Committee, even read the regulations of the party which said, which provide that a person who leaves the party may be readmitted mm -hmm. unconditionally by the president, mm -hmm. but also may be asked to serve sabbatical leave for three years before mm -hmm. being readmitted. Mm -hmm. I read those regulations and mm -hmm. I pleaded, and I was very lucky that a lot of my colleagues agreed with me. And uh, President Lungu, who was then president, chairing that meeting, uh, was gracious enough to say, it is me he wronged, it is me he took to court. Mm -hmm. However, uh, I am a president for all, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't think I want to carry grudges. So he agreed that Mayo Sampa be readmitted. Uh, as time went on, again, colleagues of mine, particularly those of us who are members of parliament in Lusaka, mm -hmm. Uh, Professor Luo, Madam Jean Kapata, and others met, and this was a time when we were having a by-election for mayor. Mm -hmm. And again, we said, let's give the young man an opportunity, and we lobbied colleagues, and there were some who had other people in mind, but we managed to convince everybody, and Mao Sampa was given the opportunity to contest as mayor. When he was applying as Member of Parliament for Matero again, he came back to us, and mm -hmm. I was again in the leadership mm -hmm. of doing that. And yes, I've had a very good relationship with Miles mm -hmm. uh, over a long period of time, even before uh, I went to Parliament. We knew each other and would uh, interact very well. So on one hand, I regret having done that, mm -hmm. but on the other, I'm very happy. that uh, I don't think that God mm. will punish me mm. for not giving people and what else do you feel you should have done that could have evaded in all these three questions in in one does this question your judgment, your ability to, you know, to, to judge, to manage, you know, this big opposition party? You were very upset with Miles. Hmm. The first thing I did was to call him. And I called him on his several numbers. You know, he carries probably four or five different numbers. Yeah. And I called him on each of his numbers. He did not respond. I sent him a message asking him, what is it that you said that your press conference which has created so much anger amongst the people, amongst the members? And he wrote to me a very long statement where he was actually uh, agreeing with the sentiments of the people that he had said bad things about others. And his only alibi was that I did not name any, any, any person. Mm. But obviously it was clear what he was talking about. When he said former ministers, obviously it was that club of former ministers that he was uh, pouring scorn on. And after that, uh, in the Central Committee meeting, members were calling for his expulsion. Mm. And I decided, no, the Constitution empowers me. Mm. Article 61 of the Constitution empowers me to take display measures against a member without necessarily taking that matter to the display committee. Mm. And I didn't want the matter to be protracted. I wanted the matter yeah. to end very quickly. Mm. And I slapped Miles on the wrist by giving a six-week suspension, not from the party, mm. a six-week suspension from being member of the Central Committee. Right. And remember that it was I who appointed him. And he accepted my authority to appoint him. Mm. But soon after that, he went to court and challenged my authority mm. and went to court and said, this man has no authority to be acting president. And this committee, or the executive committee, has no, the central committee has no authority because they were simply appointed mm. and therefore I cannot be subject to their disciplinary measures. Now, what was it that I could have done differently? Mm. 
One thing I should have done differently is not to suspend him. Mm -hmm. I should have expelled him. Uh -huh. You have now expelled him and written to Parliament that the material seat should be vacated and there should be a by-election. Are you confident that the Speaker is uh, going to abide by your request? And assuming she doesn't do that, what next? Assuming she does, you know, that, is your conscience clear to have another by-election in these difficult economic uh, times? At the same time, you confident you can win this or you basically doing this because of principles, because of that's what, you know, the rules, you know, you know say? That's very loaded. Yes, it First, is. First, do I have confidence that the National Assembly yeah. will accept sudden mm -hmm. that the institution of Parliament can ignore the letter that we wrote mm -hmm. and can say to us that they have received a letter written by Mao's Sampa's Secretary General mm -hmm. in which he is purporting in which he's purporting to have replaced Brian Mondobile mm -hmm. as leader of opposition. Mm -hmm. What does that tell about Parliament? Mm -hmm. What does it say about Parliament? Mm -hmm. Parliament is saying to us that they are willing to recognize the product of an illegality mm -hmm. over us who are duly elected mm -hmm. to run this party. <clears throat> so, having said this, I will not be shocked if Parliament decides mm -hmm. to ignore the authority that we have and to consider mm -hmm. Mao's mm -hmm. But this is something that Parliament must know that they are putting themselves on a test mm -hmm. in the eyes of the public. Mm -hmm. So I will not be the judge. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that the public will judge. Mm -hmm. On what basis can Parliament accept that Mao Sampa is the president of the Patriotic Front? Mm -hmm when they have access to our constitution mm -hmm. and our constitution spells out exactly how an extraordinary conference will be convened. Mm -hmm. It is very clear in our constitution that no individual mm -hmm. can convene an extraordinary conference. Mm -hmm. Any conference to be convened, it has to be a resolution of the Central Committee. Yeah. Now, the Central Committee that sat last week decided we are not going to have the conference on the 28th of October. Mm -hmm. That having been said and communicated to everybody, mm -hmm. even in the ears of the people at Parliament, how could they possibly say, yes, this meeting that was held on the 24th was a correctly and legally held conference? Mm -hmm. Further, our Constitution is very clear who shall chair a conference. Mm -hmm. Our conferences cannot be chaired, not even by the president. Mm -hmm. Our conferences must be chaired by the national chairman of the party. Mm -hmm. Was our national chairman at that conference? No. Further, our electoral college is spelled out. Mm -hmm. There must be no le up to 600 delegates from every province. Mm -hmm. All members of parliament are members of the council and through that members of the conference. Our councillors are members of the conference. Mm -hmm. Our central committee is supposed to be represented in total at the conference. Now, if none of the members of the central committee of the PF attended that uh, hoax, mm -hmm. surely how can parliament yeah. accept the outcome of that poisoned chalice? Yeah. And parliament is aware of the fact that this matter is in court. Right. And for as long as the matter is in court, we hold the fort mm -hmm. until such a time that the court orders otherwise. Mm -hmm. The court hasn't pronounced itself. Mm -hmm. 
the Registrar of Societies hasn't announced, pronounced herself. And I saw the propaganda by ZNBC, and this is to show you that this issue of Mayo Sampa is not a Mayo Sampa issue. Unfortunately, your nephew has just been found to be the right weak soul at the right place, mm. and he's just being abused. And I feel for Miles, he's being abused. This is the reason why you see all these huge headlines in, in government papers, mm. huge headlines on ZNBC. How could this uh, spokesperson of home affairs misinform the people by saying the Registrar of Societies has received the list to try and create an impression that the Registrar of Societies has replaced the list? Mm. The Registrar of Societies has not yet replaced the list because if the Registrar of Society was to do that, we will go to court and challenge her. We submit constitutions. All organizations, mm. all political parties are compelled by law to furnish the office of the registrar with a copy right. of their constitution. Why is that? Yeah. So that if there is a dispute in that organization, mm -hmm. the registrar will go to the constitution and say, what does the constitution say? Right. Did you abide by the articles of your constitution? Yeah. If you don't, the registrar of societies will not take right. action. Having said that, Vice President, right, there have been so many challenges, you know, questionable you know, issues that is, have transpired lately. But, don't you think the delay to hold the extraordinary conference is partly to blame for the creation of all most of these challenges? I, I don't think so. I don't subscribe to that because, as a matter of fact, probably the delay of holding our conference has been a very good opportunity for the party to learn mm -hmm. and to understand each other. Mm -hmm. Because can you imagine, had we held the conference and we carried along the likes of uh, Miles Sampa, mm. and we carried along the likes of Chavinga, mm. you never know what kind of snakes they would have become in the future. Mm. So probably this delay is, uh, is God sent. As a rider to that, could this delay have something to do with uh, the return of uh, the former President, that you are not sure whether he was coming or not, so you have to you have to put uh, the whole the hosting of the the extraordinary conference in utter abeyance until you know you you appreciated the position, the status of the former president, former pre Republican president, sixth Republican president of Zambia, mm -hmm. and current president of the Patriotic Front, has always been president of the PF. Mm -hmm. And uh, even those who have been making commentaries, even those who have been challenging his receiving of benefits. But he wrote have to cabinet, you know, and say he had resigned from politics. Yes, yeah. he, he wrote and said yeah. he had resigned from active politics. Mm -hmm. But he also put a rider. He said, yeah. I'm going to hold this position in the party until I hand over to my successor mm -hmm. after he has been elected. Now in he's handed over to himself. Yes, now he has been forced to hand over to himself because he has come to the realization that when he said I've resigned, the likes of Miles Sampa have become pawns mm -hmm. in the game, that they're now being told, look, there's a vacuum vacancy at the presidency and because of that vacancy push for the extraordinary conference go and hold that illegal conference because there's a vacancy they tried to twist the whole thing to create an impression that President Edgar Lungu was no longer president. Mm. But the truth of the matter is that President Edgar Lungu is and has always been the only legally elected president of this party. Mouth. And he took leave. Yeah. And by the way, let me explain this for the yeah. sake of the viewers. President Edgar Lungu on the 26th of, 28th of August 2021 mm. came to address what was his last Central Committee mm. meeting. In that meeting, he informed all of us, colleagues, mm -hmm. I have written to Secretary to Cabinet yeah. saying I'm going out of active politics. I have also written to you, colleagues, mm -hmm. that I resign from the party, from being president. Mm -hmm. The Central Committee, that meeting, said, no, Mr. President, mm -hmm. we shall not allow you to resign. Mm -hmm. 
Huh? Mm -hmm. And without meaning to embarrass anybody, I yeah. can say openly on this pro program that there was there were tears in that meeting. Mm -hmm. Members of the Central Committee shed tears in that meeting. Mm -hmm. In the spirit of ensuring that the legacy of President Michael Trufiasat who formed this party, mm. the party that made President Edgar Chagwalungu president of the Republic of Zambia. What other reward would he give mm. to such a man? Mm. And I think that he chose a perfect day, and he chose a perfect speech mm. to say, for as long as I live, mm. I shall do everything within my power to make sure that the party yeah. survives. The terrain is already difficult. The first day to report to the Secretariat, the Secretariat is closed. That those who are saying uh, his, um, uh, his immunity, you know, could be uh, lifted, uh, you could spend a lot of time in, in court, you know, like the late President Fritz Luba you know, did again. It's so it's so loaded. You know, at the back of all this, I'm not saying uh, President uh, Hakainde is is involved. President Longo threatened that if I win, I am going to lock up. You know, this man. This man is human. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying he's involved in in all this. Don't you think this president would be feeling? Uncomfortable. I know he has welcomed uh, uh, President Lungu's uh, in return. This is a loaded question. Could you try and unravel all these issues, you know, that I brought up? Uh, I have no doubt in my mind, no doubt whatsoever, mm -hmm. that uh, President Hagainde, whom I love to call BMW. Mm -hmm. And now I can also... BMW as in what? Now I can also add DBMW, mm -hmm. Dictator Bali Muntuabufi, mm -hmm. is extremely, extremely paranoid. And all, by, 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 and by, all by politicians the, like that vice president, well, most politicians, they uh, have never come across a perfect politician. I don't think anyone is perfect, but, yeah. but I have come across presidents who are confident mm. that they hold the position because they deserve that position because the people genuinely mm. honored them with that position. Mm -hmm. As for the president we have, no, mm. he lacks that confidence. Mm. And I appeal to him, and I've done it before, mm. please, President Hagainde, you beat your closest rival with one million votes. Yep. Build confidence. Mm -hmm. And show your confidence by using love. Show us the respect you have mm -hmm. for the Zambian people. Mm -hmm. Not what we are seeing from him. But your, let me give but an your, example. But your let, government, let, you treated this man also, Vice President. How? And many other people. You locked him up in, in, in prison. You know, others... They were killed, caught and caught. You know, I, others were bruised. I mean, isn't some of these things I repeat of what your government you know, did, you know, Vice President? You know, I have to blame ourselves right. for not being as articulate propagandists mm -hmm. as UPND. Mm -hmm. I blame ourselves. We are not as good at propaganda as UPND. You have learned a lesson now. We have learned a lesson and I think we have invest, to invest like they did in propaganda and we have to hire friends from outside mm. to assist us with the propaganda because that's exactly what they did. It was just full of propaganda and lots of lies and lies and lies. Mm. The reason why I said to you that Haga Inde is extremely paranoid at the name of Patriotic Front mm. and that the name especially of Edgar Lungu mm. is what he reacts how he reacts each time he hears the patriotic front just say something about power mm -hmm. when we say amongst ourselves what is his response mm -hmm. he even goes to the extent of going to a public meeting and saying well, let me, let me, let me say we'll start let me, bringing let me, their necks the late lady made the, he, he, his so recent piece and uh, and michael said let me tell the uh, michael said the same thing that this is my share 
You yes. Can't, you can't sit on this. Yes. yes. Mm. But he did and not. This is what he, did, is saying he did not threaten yeah. to kill him. Oh no, he hasn't threatened. Uh, vice tell, tell me what it to means. Kill? No, no. Wait a minute. Tell me what if it means. Anything, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Said, no. Wait up. a minute. Let's let's yeah. let's have this conversation. Yeah. Tell me what it means when a person. If I said to you, mm. I will come behind you mm. and wring your neck. What does that mean? What happens to a person when you wring their necks? Well, these are just they, 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 go, they go dancing. I, I don't think do, this do, can do they be, go do they know, go away happy, healthy? What, 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 but it's what, a threat. Yeah, but what I'm, what I'm saying wasn't is, the threat made. What, the sides. threat the threat was made. The threats have been made. The th no, the threat President was Zoom made. Threatened this man also. The, the threat was yeah. made by President Hagainde mm -hmm. less than six months ago. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And our message to him is that President Hagainde, yes, you're asking, and our answer to him is that, yes, that's our answer to him. And mm -hmm. let him build the confidence that I'm president. Mm -hmm. huh? Can you explain to me, are you sure that the police command would do what they did on Independence Day? and would do what they are doing now to go and surround our secretariat mm -hmm. to stop us from accessing our own property the saying is for your security that is what i've heard you know that can you imagine? the other faction of mars will come and attack you can you imagine how ridiculous that yeah. is that's what they say yeah but don't you see how ridiculous it is yeah. somebody in the police intelligence system have picked up the fact that somebody wants to come and attack prime tv right. And then, instead of the police coming to protect Prime TV, mm. they come and tell everybody at Prime TV, get out, we don't want, want you here. Mm. What kind of logic is that? Mm. You go and evict a victim. Yeah. All right. right? Because let's, you um, want to protect, to let's, protect them. Let's, How? Let's make progress. Um, I'm sure you have sat with uh, uh, President Lungu. We'll be going to the audience very shortly. What is the roadmap now of what President, uh, you know, Lungu wants to to do to PF to politics? I remember the, during the announcement, he made a clarion call to other opposition parties that they should all rally together. What does this mean? What What did you read into a, uh, you know, into that? President Edgar Lungu was forced to come back to lead this party, to forgo all the benefits mm -hmm. of being former president for his love, first of all, for the party. Mm -hmm. Secondly, for his love for democracy. Mm -hmm. Because he realizes that uh, unless he does that and closes that gap, that so-called so vacancy, mm -hmm. which Miles Sampa is being made to clamor mm -hmm. for, the party runs the risk of continuing yeah. to be embroiled in these problems. Mm. So he has been forced out of retirement. Mm. And those of us who uh, are in support of democracy and in support of the PF, mm. we welcome him totally. And I'm happy that the Central Committee meeting held yesterday unanimously resolved that yes, we must welcome him back mm. to come and lead this party. Now what is his role? Mm. I am not defining the role. Yeah. I heard in his speech on the 28th of yeah. October, where he said, I am coming back not because of an ambition mm -hmm. to become president of Zambia again. I'm glad, I want I'm to glad run, you clarify that. Uh, yes, I'm r coming back to run this party, to rally all other opposition political parties. Mm. And when the time comes, whichever person who emerges to be the one who's suitable to run on our behalf, I shall give my support to. Mm -hmm. And he did not only confine himself to members of the patriotic front, he actually opened the door and said, it could be Kalaba, it could be Membe, it could be Kateka, mm -hmm. it could be anybody who emerges as a suitable person to lead us into the 2026 elections, I shall render my support to them. Are you but his role now yeah. is to make sure that first he saves the PF, secondly he strengthens it, and the third he makes sure that he brings together all like-minded opposition political parties for us to rally together. He could, he could stick to that mandate, but at the same time, you know, uh, 
What about the other calls, even from senior members? You know that I know Lusambo, you know, Mumbi have said that this is our candidate in the 2026. How, how do you reconcile that, uh, Vice President? You, you can't stop people from having preferences. Mm -hmm. You can't. There are some people in my party, and I'm being honest, there are some people in my party who prefer me. Right. And they've said it publicly. Mm. They have even said it to President Ed Galungu. Yeah. And President Ed Galungu has told all of us, as long as you're a member of this party, mm. and you have what it takes, and you have the support of the people, image. Great. Vice President, interesting times ahead. You know, this is the big debate. Uh, my guest, Vice President of uh, PF, you know, given Lubinda. This is the big debate from Prime TV. Join us very shortly as uh, a few members of the audience you know, will raise, uh, you know, in a couple of issues. Join us very shortly. You are watching The Big Debate. You are watching The Big Debate. This is the big debate from Prime TV. Tonight, my guest is Given Lubinda, Vice President of the PF. We've belabored on some of the, uh, the issues. Let's give an opportunity to a few members of the audience to raise the pertinent questions. Yes, sir. Your name, please. Uh, my name is uh, Tiza Mkuka. Yes, Tiza, go ahead. And um, uh, I'm coming from the youth spectrum in Zambia. I'm an activist. Um, I'd love to ask a question on behalf of the German young people directly to the incoming vice president. I'm glad that uh, he's been in government before, so he has some experience. But my question at this juncture is, um, when you form government in 2026, what sort of long-term sustainable development plan that you may have for the Zambian young people? Because right now, it's, it's been, the information is with everybody, uh, young people don't have real jobs. Uh, we've observed they were promised um, by the current government that when they form government, they would be given jobs. But what we've observed is that no real job was created. We observed that uh, those few who were actually employed, those were gaps that were being filled in the health sector. But German young people want real jobs. So what plan does the Patriotic Front and you as the incoming vice president have to um, elevate young people from the unemployment rate, which is escalating right now? Then the second question is that um, it's evident when you go everywhere in the country, um, the inflation rate has increased. There's, there's a fuel which has gone up. The cost of living is, is gone upwards. Um, to be specific, we all can't afford millimil. Myself, I've not had Shima for, for a month now because I can't afford millimil. Does the PF have any plan which is solid and short term when they form government on how they can bring down the cost of this so that we as ordinary citizens can be able to afford right. these things? And next gentleman. Um, I just want to verify on Zambia and then and I'm a photographer, or a, I'm a photographer. So um, you, you had asked um, the few vice president, um, the question concerning that um, President Kalungu then saying that he would um, at least Mr. Uh, Haka in the he's the current uh, president now. Uh, just to clarify on, on that from what I know, um, there was a recording then uh, where Mr. Hakai Mbishilema was, um, was um, having some conversation there and then with some business uh, men then in opposition. And um, Mr. President Lungu was responding to that, saying if it's true, then I'm going to arrest him and I return back in power. That's a very good one. Right, okay. Lady? At the back? Okay, right. Let, let's deal with those uh, you know, you know, two questions, uh, you know, Vice President. Thank you. <coughs> uh, thank you for that very pointed question, the issue of youth employment. We have not abandoned our 2021-2026 manifesto. And if you look at our manifesto on youths, 
we proposed in there numerous programs to empower youths. First, you may recall that uh, we were the ones who started the program of internship and attachments for our students. The reason we started that program was to make sure that uh, our youths, as they graduate, they already have job experience because we realized that the employment uh, sector always asks our youths for experience. Now, if the government doesn't facilitate for them to have experience while they are still in school, then the chances of them getting jobs is minimized. So we started that program, and our intention was to roll it out so that every student in Zambia will have an opportunity to go into internship. And there was money that we were budgeting for that. We were actually paying these students to go for internship, and not only in government institutions, but also in private institutions. We also came up with a plan that we're going to enhance the youth entrepreneurship program so that we have a fund specifically to assist youths. This would also go in hand in glove with our program to introduce a second level of training so that instead of all our children going through academic training, mm -hmm. some must go into skills development from childhood because we know for a fact that not every child has uh, the talent for writing and being a journalist. Some of the children are born to do physical work and give them an opportunity from early age. That was the second program. The third is unfortunately a program that the new doom government are trying to implement without knowing how we wanted to implement it. They just read our manifesto and they thought they could uh, emulate it. And they're coming now with what they're calling uh, uh, comprehensive agriculture, whatever, whatever, where they're saying they're going to have a loan for farmers. For us, the idea was let us set up an agricultural bank and let us also ensure that the youths from young age have access to farming land so that they can, as they are going through the meal of employment, they have some small little farm somewhere where they can start to grow goats and pigs and sheep so that we expand the employment base. What do you think was the intention when we said, let us make sure that the mines are Zambian owned? The idea was, if the mines are Zambian owned, the Zambians who get profits from mining our minerals, we invest the money in Zambia. By investing the money in Zambia, what does that mean? It means creating jobs, because it is investment that creates jobs. Unfortunately, the new doom government, this capitalist government, which is thinking only about their pockets and the pockets of their foreign sponsors, has decided that the mines shall continue to be run by foreigners. So that all the profits are being expropriated and creating jobs outside Zambia. So we had a clear plan on how to empower the youths. And come 2026, you shall see all these programs being rolled out. The issue of inflation. In an agricultural country such as Zambia, food inflation is what influ influences total inflation. Why was it that we were managing to hold back inflation? We're holding back inflation up to the level of 12%. And Hada Inde Hijidema was walking around with graphs. At every TV program, he was producing graphs, producing calculator. When I come, inflation will drop to less than 10%. And yet when the time has come for him, what has he done? He found 1.5 million metric tons of maize, which we left in 2021. In August, when President Lungu handed power to him, he also handed the keys to 1.5 million metric tons of maize at FRA. On top of that, the agricultural season 2021-2022, which we kicked off and we supplied inputs to the farmers, was to produce 3.2 million tons of maize in 2022. Add the two is 4.7 million metric tons. At the food consumption of 150 to 200,000 metric tons a month, we had sufficient stocks to last us the whole year. If you can and quickly what, deal with the questions, we're running out of time. What, what did Haga Inde do? Yeah. He sold all our maize. And he did not even charge the excise duty. He sold our maize for free to Congo. Because of that, our maize costs increased. Our maize prices increased. And because of the food costs increasing, total inflation right. increased. Deal, deal quickly. I, I think that question basically about the threats, you know, we dealt and you know with it. Can we have one final one final 
kind of question. Any word at the back? No, right. You know, because of the time, uh, in, in a fact, uh, you know, in a vice president, uh, one question because you're a former uh, justice minister. There, for lack of a better word, maneuvers to see how we can relook you know, the eligibility of uh, President Lungu, the move to dissolve, you know, Concord. When you see. What are your thoughts on this, mm. especially as former justice minister? To do away with any court established by the Constitution, you require a constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. And I want to disclose to the Zambian people that uh, the new Doom government wrote to us somewhere in March asking us to give them ideas on how they should go about with the constitutional amendment process. Mm -hmm. And we wrote to them and said, you know what to do. You only have to do better than we did. Mm -hmm. Because you shut down our process saying we hadn't consulted enough, mm -hmm. huh? and that we didn't uh, come up with all the issues that people wanted to hear. So we said to them, you know that we set a standard. So yeah. do better than we did. That's when we'll support you. Then they have may come up with a strange maneuver. They now wrote to members of parliament, to our members of parliament and told them, can you sit as MPs for the Patriotic Front? Mm -hmm so that you can come up with non-contentious issues in the Constitution, so that we can pass those non-contentious issues. When our members of Parliament brought the letter to us, as they ought to do, we told them that that is unconstitutional. Yeah. So we said no to it. So even now, when they start talking about amending the Constitution to do away the Concord, mm -hmm. sorry, we shall not allow right. them to do it. My final question, Vice President, the political environment right now is just not, uh, you know, right. The political environment in in PF in 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 the country is not right. What would it take for reconciliation? What would it take to create a conducive, you know, you know environment, especially as we? start the journey towards 2026. The first is for Haga to accept that he's president mm -hmm. and leave the paranoia out of it. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. Number two, he has to reconcile with himself mm -hmm. and leave history behind him. Mm -hmm. He was elected president of Zambia and that day he should have realized I am no longer leader of uh, opposition, mm -hmm. I'm now head of state. He must posture himself as head of state. He must present himself as head of state. That will allow him, it will liberate him, mm -hmm. so that he doesn't go to plod, uh, meetings saying, they are regrouping, they are regrouping. This is a country for all citizens. Allow them to regroup. He actually is the one who should be in the forefront saying, please, police, allow those opposition parties to meet not what he did yesterday mm. sending police with tear gas to come and disperse an indoor meeting of the patriotic front this is happening under his watch we have not had him condemn this he's actually encouraging it he is the one who is encouraging miles sampa mm. We have read the numerous papers that actually is being miles sampa is being sponsored from community house mm. Now, if we're going to reconcile in this country, it starts with him. Mm. I have heard all this talk about him saying, me, I meet with President Ed Galungu, we talk. When I go to President Ed Galungu and I say, why is it that when you talk, you don't tell us? And Ed Galungu just says, I don't know when he talks to me. Mm. Now, how does reconciliation start? The process of reconciliation starts with the one who has the power, mm. not the weaker. Mm. No. The one who has power now is not PF. The ones who have power is UPND. But look at how even the vice president treats our members of parliament with disdain. How do you expect us to react? Yeah. So the starting point for healing in Zambia is with the head of state. Right. And for him, it is with himself. Let him accept that he's president. Let him reconcile with himself. Let him have peace at heart. I pray for him. Please enjoy your presidency, Omunene. Enjoy it. 
you are president karigana mudala karigana so that even when you talk to zambians they can see that go you president vice president thank you for appearing on my big debate it's always a pleasure and thank you very much for having me i hope that we can have another opportunity sure. especially after we've come over this matter right. and i say to members of the patriotic front that don't lose heart pressure makes diamond we are under a test and after this we are going to be even stronger than we were in 2011. this is dj mutati exclusive Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.